Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the crystal field theory for the tetrahedral complex and now in this topic I am going to talk about the crystal field theory for the octahedral complex. So what is the theory and what is the difference between this and the previous one? This is what I am going to talk about in this topic. So friends, here we are going to talk about the crystal field theory for the octahedral complexes. For So for that, we have to understand a particular diagram and the diagram is... So friends, this is nothing but an octahedron where we can find that is the metal is at the center and there are basically six ligands that is one, two, three, four, five and six. And all those ligands are on the vertices of the octahedron and they are also on the axis as you can see over here that is y axis, x axis, z axis, minus z axis, minus y axis, this would be minus x axis. So in that case they are basically located. So based on that let me explain you that what are the splitting of the electrons and how it will take place. So based on that let me give you the certain information. So friends we understand that is the d orbitals that is for the metal atoms so obviously they will split because of whenever a ligand approaches the d orbital they will split into two another energy levels but the dz square and dx square y square orbitals are in the direction of axis they have maximum electron density along the axis and that's the reason they experience maximum electrostatic repulsion due to ligands so this is what i'm going to talk about we understand that is the dz square and dx square minus y square so they have basically electron density on the axis and that's the reason here we can see that is the ligands are approaching the metal through the axis only and that's the reason they will find or they will experience more repulsion and that is how basically the energy it will be higher over here while talking about the other one we have that is dxy dyz and dzx orbital are planar orbitals so they have maximum electron density on the plane and in between the axis they experience less electrostatic repulsion due to ligands because ligands are not approaching through the plane they are approaching through the axis and that's the reason the ligands are on the axis whenever they are approaching the metal and in between the two axes obviously we understand that is there is a presence of ligand but on the plane there is no ligand so that's the reason that the electron density of this orbitals it will not repel that much with the ligands and that is how basically this are the three orbitals which will be present at the lower energy level so based on that let me give you the energy level diagram so this is the energy level diagram that is what we can see over here and and this is nothing but the degenerate metal d orbitals whenever there is no ligands associated with it and suppose if whenever a ligands are approaching the d orbitals obviously the d orbitals it will separate into two energy level or it will get split into two energy level so here we can find that is the dxy dyz and dzx are present at the lower level and they are known as t2g so while the higher energy level so that is dx square minus y square and dz square they will be present at the higher energy level and that is nothing but eg the difference between this energy is represented by delta o and in this case this o it represents octahedral and the value is nothing but ndq so suppose if we have to calculate the energy of that is dxy dyz and dzx orbital so therefore it is that is 0 0.4 delta 0 lesser compared to that of the original that is energy level and talking about that is this eg so this eg is 0 0.6 delta o less stable compared to that of this energy level so this is how basically the d orbitals get split up into two different energy levels and now let me talk about the electron filling suppose if we have to fill three electrons so therefore the three electrons it will be present from the lower energy level and then it will be shifted to the higher energy level so therefore the electrons will be one two three three over here and suppose if we have to fill the fourth electron so the fourth electron can be filled at the upper energy level or at the lower energy level it will depend upon the ligand if the ligand is a strong field ligand in that case the splitting will be more and that's the reason that the electrons it will be filled in the lower energy level and those complex are basically known as low spin complex and suppose if the fourth electron is basically excited here so in that case we could say that is that kind of complex is known as high spin complex because the splitting it will be less and that's the reason that electron can be shifted from this energy level to this energy level very easily and that is how basically and the electrons get unpaired over here while talking about that is low spin complex so electrons get paired up over here so therefore this are the two difference between the previous one and this one so here we can find that is dxy dyz and dzx are present at the lower energy level while talking about the previous one that is for the tetrahedral complex 
so in that case dx y d y z and d z x they were present at the upper energy level so that is the difference between this two complex and that's it so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope i'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe channel. thank you so much